Hello everyone, today in this video I'll be discussing the first module of DBMS uh, BCS403 and in this module whatever I discuss, listen very carefully because those are the very important questions and if you study that much you can easily score more than 80% marks and before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more like this, if you have any doubt you can DM me on Instagram, okay. So without wasting more time let's get started, this is a syllabus copy for the first module, okay let's get started with the uh, each topic, okay. Each topic I'll tell you how to remember and uh, what are the important concepts. The first is introduction to databases, first you need to know what is data and what is database data is some information okay and database is to uh, that which stores that information okay it is an electronically stored collection of data okay that is called as a database it will look something like this okay here the data will be stored this thing is called as a database okay and it has some properties okay what are the properties database represents some aspect of the real world okay in real world if the college is there a database of the college will be present and this is called as a mini world okay and whatever changes are happening in the real world that will be reflected in the mini world okay changes to the mini world are reflected in the database a database is logically coherent collection of data with some inherent meaning whatever the data is present inside that that will be having a meaning it will not be meaningless data right and it will be built for a specific purpose okay and uh, there will be people who will be using those applications so these are the implicit property this is the very important question from the exam point of view okay next what is the database management system to manage the database we use our database management system it is a general purpose software system that facilitates defining constructing manipulating and sharing database defining a database means what what is the data type used structures constraint will be used and what is the data that will be stored here constructing the database is the process of storing the data and manipulating means changing the data sharing means allowing multiple users to access that data okay and this is a simplified database environment system okay this is also a diagram very important three things are here the first is the database system okay inside that application programs is there the user will interact with the application and the program to access the data okay and in between we have the queries software to the process software to access the data okay and the metadata will be stored here and the actual data will be stored here actual data means if they uh, suppose that the uh, data is about the employees so employees data will be stored here metadata is that uh, it will be written employee data okay employee data it will be written like that so it will denote that what uh, this data is about okay what it is about that information will be written okay the information about the database okay next is characteristics of database approach this is also very important four characteristics are there first is self-describing if the database is given i can identify what kind of database it is so it is called as self-describing second is insulation between the programs data and data abstraction program and data will be separate that's all you need to remember okay next is support multiple views of data you can view the data like if this is the database you can view this much data or you can view this much data by select command you can view this much data so there are different views of the data okay so it supports the, uh, multiple views of the data last is sharing of data and multi uh, user data processing okay difference between file management system and database management system so in file management system it is easy to use and it is general and uh, database management system the use is uh, it is difficult to use and the security constraints are high okay redundancy is more here redundancy is less means duplicate data is less here here. okay it is inconsistent in the uh, more in the file system here inconsistency is less it is more consistent okay centralization is hard centralization is achieved okay and security is low security is high any five you can remember from here okay this is also very important next is advantages of using dbms approach there are nine advantages you can remember any five advantages okay so controlling redundancy means to avoid duplicate data to avoid the wastage of storage we will be using the dbms approach okay because data redundancy leads to wastage of storage if you use dbms there will be no wastage because duplicate data will not be allowed okay restricting unauthorized use hackers won't be allowed to use it so security will be there providing persistent storage for program objects the data which we store in database that will be stored for longer time okay it will be stored for longer time so it is having a persistent storage persistent means for longer time providing storage structure for efficient query processing once it is stored here we can use a query to access the actual data which we want again okay? providing backup it provides the backup it provides multiple users to uh, use it and it uh, helps in the represent the complex relationship among the data it enforces the integrity constraints it cannot have useless data inside it they should be integrated data and permitting inter inf inferencing and actions via rules you can apply rules to it okay so that uh, particular data only can be there and uh, not some other data will be accepted without uh, specifying the rules okay next is history of database applications okay first databases which came in the uh, world okay that were early databases stored a large amount of data okay like for the universities and uh, banks okay but they mixed conceptual relationship with physical storage so two things got mixed that's why it became useless okay it became very difficult then came relational database this separated the physical and conceptual okay so it separated it but it was still not flexible okay then came object oriented databases that were flexible and very easy to use but they had limited adaptation 
solution okay and the complexity and lack of standardization was there so then came the web data interchange which is xml like in the internet whatever we see the data that is stored in the web interchange format okay last is the extended database capabilities for new applications which includes the big data and NoSQL databases here all kind of data can be this data and here e-commerce data cloud so whatever the data is there into the categories okay this is the history of data next is the database model schemas and instances what is a data model data model is a collection of concepts that can be used to describe conceptual logical structure of database okay the database how it is what is its logical structure how uh, the data is stored inside it that all things can be defined using a model okay and there are three categories of model first one is high level model high level model will uh, give the users perspective like how the user is going to see it for example what will be the entities it can be student database employee database course database and attributes means what attributes will be their height age color and relationship means what is the relationship between the employee and a project employee does the project that is the relationship okay next comes the representational or implementational method this is a middle layer okay which uh, works with the software and the users in between what layer is there that is the representational layer this will have a little bit abstraction inside it okay and last is a low or physical level that is uh, de uh, giving details of how the data is stored in a computer system the actual data physical data which is stored is big bits and bytes in the computer system about that the information is given by low level of physical model so three models are there okay this is also very important next is what is a database schema schema means if a database is given what are the uh, columns in present inside it for example student database will have name student number class and major okay like that this thing is called a schema okay and data in the database at the particular moment is called as an instance okay for example i created an apple fruit inside the database okay and then i took a uh, snapshot of it then after some point of time i want to have that same point of time whatever the data was there i mean what uh, fruit i created that fruit should be there so if i restore the snapshot that fruit will be visible in the database so at a particular point of time what all data was there that will be freezed if you take a snapshot and that is called as an instance okay three schema architecture the most important question from this module okay three schema architecture you have to make three points here external level conceptual level internal uh, internal level external level deals with the persons who are the external or the end users conceptual level is an uh, uh, intermediate part between the actual database and the end users internal level deals with the stored databases that's all okay so you have to just explain those things internal level is dealing with the databases physical data model conceptual model will be hiding the details of the data model and only showing the data which is required to the external users external users are the external users we we are the external users okay so key points are here you can go through right data independence means that if we suppose we make any change to one level if you make a data change to this level it should not affect this level or this level that is called as data independence it, data independence means to change the schema at one level without affecting any other level okay there are two types of data independence one is logical data independence it is the capacity to change the conceptual schema without having to change the external schema physical independence the capacity to change the internal schema without having to change the conceptual schema okay this is the key point you need to read all right okay next comes the database languages the database languages are uh, of few kinds the first one is the data definition language to define a data we use a ddl language is a data definition language okay so to define the storage we use storage definition language if we are dealing with the views we use vdl which is view definition language and once it is compiled and we want to perform some operation like get the updates of the data what is the data present or you want to make some changes to the data that all comes under data manipulation language you will be using D dmls for making those changes okay a high level or non procedural dml can be used to specify the complex databases and also low level databases uh, languages are present to directly make changes at the lower level or the physical level okay at a one record at a time last comes the host language which is a data sub language and we can use even the query language to update and retrieve the commands okay so basically the top three are the most important ones these are the uh, other ones which are less uh, uh, frequently used okay then comes the dbms interfaces you now see we learned about the uh, database but we will not directly go and make changes to the database there will be an interface through which we will be interacting like a system will be present first uh, system is the menu base there will be menu and the options will be there we can choose what we want to do next is apps using an app you can access the database and you can make the changes forms will be there you can do it using the forms or if it is a gui you can use it using gui natural language interfaces will be there keyword based database search will be there if you put some keywords the data uh, related to that keywords will be shown speech input and output you can interact via speech and you can interact via the parametric users like
like the banking systems and interface uh, for their database administrator next comes the database system environment okay this is also very very important diagram see here four things are there okay like this is describing the whole all the types of users and all the kinds of data okay four users are there database staff who is actually handling the data casual users they sometimes use the data application programmers they always use the data parametric users like the banking systems they always require the data to be present okay so dba staff uh, deals with two things ddl statements and privileged commands okay and statements go to the compiler the statements which are given by the dba staff is combined uh, i mean compiled and then it is stored in the database uh, dictionary okay system catalog or data dictionary now the next one is the casual users they interactive query they do and that will be compiled and it will be optimized and that will go to the runtime database process in the stored database application programmers will do the application programs pre compile and dml compiler will be used here and that is connected to the system catalog okay everything is connected to the system catalog at the end okay and the parametric users what they do they do the compile transactions okay because they will be having complex queries they will be using the compile transactions all will be coming and uh, going to the runtime database process the, the values will be stored here and values will be taken from here as input and output to the stored data manager and concurrency control backup, backup recovery and subsystems all will be handed uh, via this one suppose some system fails where is the backup backup is stored in the stored database and this will just store the da uh, data of the uh, database okay it will not store all the data it will just store dictionary data okay so this is the thing you need to uh, explain and the key points are given here just whatever i explained about each of these things stored data manager ddl compiler runtime database processor query compiler does the query compilation pre compile means before compilation or what is to be done those uh, aspects okay all of these things are there totally nine points are there don't miss any of these points okay if you read this three times you'll be able to understand it okay moving on to the next topic which is entities and attributes okay well, entity is a thing an object okay like an apple apple is what entity employee employee is an entity the uh, shopkeeper shopkeeper is an entity the next each of the entity will have an attribute means what is the name of shopkeeper what is the skin color of shopkeeper what is the age of shopkeeper what is the gender of shopkeeper all those things comes under attributes okay so employee is the entity and these are the attributes okay so there are three types of attributes simple versus composite single attributes means what for example city is a single attribute because it cannot be further divided but street address is a composite attribute because street address can be further divided into number street and apartment number okay so composite versus single attributes two uh, things are there simple will have one value only composite will have uh, further division single valued multi valued okay single valued will have single value for example age what is your age 12 that's it what it, it, instead of that is if i ask you what is the uh, degree you have then you will ask me which degree school degree college degree or master's degree so it has multiple values whichever has multiple values that is called as multiple valued attribute and single value will be having single valued attribute last one is stored versus derived attributes for example birth date okay birth date is called as a stored attribute but derived attribute means what by using birth date i can calculate your age right so that is a derived attribute so age is a derived attribute and birth date is a stored attribute okay and entity type refers to the set of entities having same attributes if a set of entities have same attributes for example apple orange banana grapes this has same attributes all are what fruits so that will become one entity type entity type called as fruits collection of all entities in a particular type is called as entity set if i collect all these entity types like fruits vegetables everything is what for eating so that will be an entity set okay an example is given here for the employee and the company okay so entity set will be this okay all the kinds of entities who are employed and all the uh, companies will be present as an entity set of the company and er diagram is what entity relationship diagram employee is related to uh, the department employee works for the department right so there will be a works for the data department kind of thing and department manages the employee and employees attributes will be given here and the middle things which you see that is called as relationships okay and these are the attributes means department will have we having the name number and locations okay so all these kind of inter uh, relations in the diagram represented as the er diagram okay so er diagram uh, i mean the entity type describes a schema for the set of entities and the attribute which is unique for each element is called as key attribute so for every entity there will be a key attribute for example for car what will be the key attribute registration number and vehicle id because this will be unique for the particular car but uh, the year cannot be unique color cannot be unique because there will be thousand red cars there will be thousand cars manufactured in 2012 but registration number and vehicle id both will be same only for one car it will be one kind one id only the, the that's why it is called as key attribute okay 
and uh, an entity type which has no key attribute is called as weak entity type and which has a key attribute that is called as strong entity type okay the value is the value assigned to the attribute what is a value value means employee name is an attribute what is the employee name that is the value xyz is the uh, employee name okay so for the same thing which i uh, discussed about the company diagram for that uh, this thing is given here okay for if we separate each of these there will be different kinds of um, attributes for each of the uh, entities right so that is also given in the form of a diagram here okay separate diagram for each of these project will be having these attributes and name and number is the key attribute like that for all of these it is given okay and dependent is nothing but it is a weak attribute because it does not have a key as you can see none of this is underlined and whichever is the key right that will be underlined okay if it is not underlined, it will not be a key. Now, what is the relation? Employee E works for a company C. Okay, employee E works for what? A company C. So it is called a relation because employee is working for a co uh, company or a department. So this is a relationship. Okay, and there will be different kinds of relationship. Okay, for each employee. And cardinality ratio means what? How many to how many? Okay, for example, department to employee. One department can have n number of employees, right? So it is a one is to n. Okay, and there can be different kinds of cardinality ratios. One is to one, n is to one, one is to n, and m is to n. Okay, means suppose in imaginary scenarios, m departments and employees are working. Means five departments, three employees are working. So like that, it can be the case, right? But one employee will obviously work for one department only, right? So I am giving an example. Okay, there can be different kinds of cardinality ratio based on different scenarios. Okay, next is the weak entity types. The entity types who do not have the key attributes is called as weak entity type. So since they do not have a key, they can have a partial key. In the ER diagram, I showed you, right? Dependent that was a partial key. Okay, and weak entity type always has total participation constraints. So in making of the ER diagram, these are the things used. Okay, these are the uh, symbols used and the meanings also uh, given here. Okay, whenever you make an ER diagram, you will be writing this one. Okay, using these diagrams. Okay. The last topic is the specialization and generalization. Specialization is the process of defining subclasses of an entity type. For example, employee is the main class. Subclasses will be is employee secretary, is employee an engineer, is employee a technician, is employee a doctor, whatever. Okay. So the employee subclasses are present here. This is called as uh, specialization generalization means suppose that car is here and truck is here there are many things which are common in car and truck so that can be generalized as a vehicle okay so this is called a generalization it's all for the module one of bcs 403 and uh, if you if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe and uh, thank you so much for watching i'll see